Good afternoon and welcome back to live to IBC 2013. This afternoon I have with me Andrew Pons from Exet. Hi Andrew. Hi. Um, what's Exet? Who's Exet? Exet is a Dutch company. Um, we do conditional access and we do middleware in the form of mm -hmm. a product called DMS, which stands for Digital Monetization System. Um, we are a relatively new company uh, formed out of General Satellite and um, it's a technology arm of General Satellite uh, which supplies technology to around 12 million set-top boxes in Russia, Asia and parts of Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a team in the Netherlands, a small team in the UK and another team in Estonia. Okay. What's, what is as, as a digital monetization system or DMS, what, what is that? So, um, as the world uh, switches to digital, uh, currently there's still a lot of countries that have not started the process of digitization, especially in emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is the cost behind digitization. So, what DMS does is um, we're focusing on the emerging markets and talking to operators in those markets. Not the tier one operators uh, where there's already an established player offering very good services, but more sort of tier two or those who are trying to reach uh, households that probably wouldn't want to pay a monthly subscriber fee of about $50. Um, so very typically the free-to-view household is where we're helping. And so in order to carry out this switchover, there is a cost, and the mm. cost is the cost of the set-top box and the installation. And so typically uh, in a household it can be uh, up to $50 once you've completed the whole installation. You can get very cheap um, set-top boxes, um, when you get cheap set-top box, it often needs replacing because it breaks down. Yeah, often. sure. Um, so all that gives a cost to the operator. Now, if they're not charging a monthly fee to the subscriber, then they're losing money, or they're making a very, very low ARPU, which mm -hmm. puts them at high risk, especially if they're having to replace a box sure. every year. So DMS is a middleware, an interactive software in a broadcast environment. So it's for one-way homes. Um, we have sort of a view of the world that um, everyone's connected because we are. We all carry smartphones, we all carry, uh, we all have internet connections mm. wherever we go. In many of these markets, yes, there's internet, there's a high volume of mobile phones. Uh, if you take the example of Nigeria, about 100 million mobile phones, 24 million TV that, households. That, that many mobile phones? Yes. But they're not smartphones. No, I'm not going to say I put it back. <laughs> <laughs> so we assume everything is uh, the same level as us. So this yeah. is where you know, we look to the markets. And DMS allows operators basically of offer adverts uh, and services. So yeah. for example, uh, in many of these emerging markets, the governments issue bulletins in uh, newspapers or other publications. We're talking about health. Things exactly. or education or exactly yeah. so di my, uh, different departments will say you know there's a, a, a health program being started a vaccination program a new schools opening mm. uh, adult education they're published in newspapers now typical circulation can be maybe 50,000 but you have more viewers on television so it allows governments to offer the service reaching an audience that mm. they probably haven't reached before okay. um, and at the same time of course from an operator's point of view you're selling this service to the different advertisers and government departments, or it can be any kind of service. It's just basically information service. Again, you're targeting homes that don't have internet access. So um, we all assume we all do, but in these emerging markets, there are millions and millions of households that don't have internet yeah, access. Uh, I, I was looking at an ITU report, I think it was, from, from a couple of years ago, even not. The, the, the penetration rate of the internet in some countries, even, even countries as, as westernised in inverted commas or, or as Thailand um, and also the correlation between the use of the internet PC purchasing or PC and, and education there's a very the more educated people were then the more likely to have a PC and use the internet but I'll, I'll come back more to DMS in a minute but this is a question I've been asking since we, do we have an overly westernised view of Technology, as you say, we as kind of unconsciously assume that everybody is connected now and and, and, and is, is is worried about Windows 8, you know. <laughs> but, but having been to Africa myself, that that doesn't really seem to be the case. 
Well, I think everybody should be worried about Windows 8. <laughs> and then, um, yes. Once, once we got over that, we had other problems. But, um, well, as I said to you, you know, Nigeria, 100 million mobile phones. Mm. Um, most of those phones will not have internet connection. Most of those phones will not be smartphones. So <coughs> um, the mobile phone companies, of course, and quite rightly, will tell you that you know, they've got a massive growth in these emerging markets. But we, we do have a westernized view unless we've been there and, and seen it mm -hmm. for ourselves. Um, there is always the, the top tier in every nation that you go to, top 10%, top 5%, top 20%, mm -hmm. which will have everything. You know? um, but you've got to look at the infrastructure of some of these countries. Um, you know, ripping up roads is very easy, no problem. Then you can put the, sure. the, the bandwidth in. But then, again, you have a TV in your house, you have a, a basic mobile phone, are you going to afford the internet connection? You're only going to, only going to have an internet connection if you can afford the PC. Mm. Um, as technology moves on, you probably, if you can afford a PC, you can probably afford a smartphone instead. Okay. Having said that, if you look at the recent launch of the Apple iPhone, um, those prices, you know, the cheap versions, aren't cheap. There's only about an 80 or 60 quid difference between the two, and, and it's still over 400 pounds, yeah. the cheapest one. I mean, that's, no wonder they lost $23 billion off their share price in a day. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so, I agree. So that, that's where we think, you know, if you look at it, uh, we're offering a smart box solution that allows the operator to purchase it. It could be even up to $20 mm. or less. Um, they'll be able to move on to pay TV services if they want to in the future. And at the same time, they are creating a new revenue service through DMS. <coughs> As I said, it's a portal, very easy to use. <coughs> we look again at targeting um, people make over their 40s, 50s, yeah, um, sure. who I really just back with the hand of, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, uh, got, you know, basic use of the remote control. It has to be basically up and down and mm. an OK button. So we make it very simple, but very powerful, easy to use, but also the key is, for an operator's point of view, easy to manage. Mm. So these are services, we're not using new technology, we're just repurposing it to help the operator, who again feels threatened with over-the-top services. Mm. So um, that, that's, that's where we're coming in. Okay. So. Uh, you may not want to be too specific about this, but roughly, what are we talking about in terms of subscribers being able to afford just for the basic TV service per month? What are you looking at? Five, six, seven, eight dollars a month or something? Or are you... um, you'd look at it, yes. I mean, um, it, it could even be as low as ten dollars a year. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. It's is again. You're coming from a market where am I being overly Western again? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> TV is free. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I don't, I, I'm used to having my TV for free. I've got a digital switch over now, so I need a set-top box. That set-top box has to be paid for by somebody. In many of these emerging markets, they'll only want to pay once. So they bought this, uh, the box, it's theirs, and they keep it. Mm -hmm. um, if the operator is going to subsidize that, they have to make money some other way. So it's either through carriage fees, which is very low margin, sure. or through a new apps. And you know, everywhere around here, you see advertising apps, but they are mm -hmm. very two-way broadband intensive apps. Sure, sure, okay. But then if you're an operator and or an advertiser and then Xset is involved, where is, how do you do the revenue sharing on the additional services? Be that, as you say, government advertising, local advertising, teleshopping potentially, how does that work? So at Xset we, we're flexible with our models because these markets are all different. So you can start with, um, PSL of where you do is we provide a whole series of portals, let's say typically three, four hundred pages uh, on, on a set-top box, mm -hmm. um, and the operator can then sell those out to magazines, to journalists, to shops, to sporting mm -hmm. pages, whatever it is, advertisers, to just purely um, put adver advertisements there. Um, we can do a revenue share where as they sell each box, we would take a, a percentage of, of the fee or a, a small fee per box to show that you know, if they're not growing, we're not growing, so it helps us work with the operator to ensure they succeed. Um, again, you can link uh, purchases from teleshopping. So for example, let's say a shop is advertising um, a whole series of goods, and the way you get your good is through a text service. Oh, yeah, I presume the return path you're talking exactly, about the is the mobile. Path. Exactly, yeah. so those numbers can be tracked, and we can take a cut of each purchase. So we would say, okay, well, let's say we take 25% of everything we sell through the DMS app. So if you mm. don't sell, we don't um, make any money. So it's our interest to, to help you. 
and clear, where does conditional access fit into this? I'm not talking about necessarily conditional access in terms of uh, encrypting programming, but in terms of set-top box or receiver addressability, where does that play in this? Because I understand General Satellite is, you know, has expertise in that field. Yes, yeah, so as I said, General Satellite, um, using exec technology, has secured the content of mm. Tricolor Tri in Russia, yeah, sure. Libid in Ukraine, RMEC in Cambodia, and, and other countries, and, and it's growing. As I said, typically emerging markets, which you don't really get much in the headlines, but uh, you know, we're securing content, HD content, international HD content, um, in, in all these countries. Uh, we, those operators wouldn't be getting that content mm. if, if the CAS wasn't there. With regards to emerging markets, um, we can build in the CAS and the operators can activate it later if they wish to offer uh, bouquets or pay TV programs in, in the future. So it's there and they can go from free to view to pay TV in a year or two years or whatever it is, whatever their strategy is. Okay. Uh, I, think, I, I remember reading somewhere that the ITU had not exactly mandated, but was certainly heavily encouraging digital switchover by 2015 for emerging markets, and now that's slipped somewhat, 2017, yes. 20. So how important is DMS in, in, in digital switchover then, and, and, and the monetization of that? And second sort of part of that question, are you dealing at a government level, or are you, you dealing solely at an operator level, or how does that work? Um, we, we deal at operator level, but um, in some countries, the operator is also the, the country, so obviously every country has a national broadcaster. Mm. Um, the ITU date, like every single switchover date, will, will drop and drop and drop and, and keep mm, sure. being, being put back. Um, we, we do talk to government departments uh, at helping them uh, look at new revenue models in order to pay for, for the digital switchover. Um, some governments you know, have started with a strategy of giving away the set-top box. That's a loss leader. You're, never, you're just never going to yeah, make sure. money on that or at all. You're going to mm. make a lot of loss of money. The conditional access system can be used to track where the boxes are. Um, so it allows them to ensure that the household is receiving a digital service. And um, we'll work with governments to see which is the best model to help them create new revenue streams. We're not there to tell them they're broadcast strategy, we're there to help them bring in new revenue using the existing technology that exists. So which parts of the world does DMS have a particular hold or potential hold? You know, where, where, where do you see, we're talking Africa, India, Indian subcontinent, rest of Asia, Eastern Europe, where, where are we? Um, it'll be predominantly in emerging markets where they haven't carried out the digital switch over yet. Okay. So in many countries, there's many cable operators uh, like the Philippines or India, uh, some have digitized, some haven't. Some have digitized and aren't making money, some have digitized and mm. uh, losing a lot of money. So we do look at it predominantly in emerging markets. We've had some sales recently in India. We're looking at uh, others in, in parts of the Philippines and Indonesia mm. and also in some countries in Africa as well. Wherever we go, Again, we're bringing something new to the operators, bringing them a new revenue stream. And it's, mm. the key as well is that it's very simple to manage. Mm. The, the challenge is more to do with um, a change of mind with the broadcaster. The broadcaster is used to broadcasting. Mm. You're asking them to think differently in order to bring a new revenue stream, which means offering services in a broadcast environment, which you'd expect on the internet. I was going to say the internet, yes, yeah, sure. You know, so you take, yeah. as I said, DMS, Exet isn't using DMS to compete with the internet, it's there for the homes that have very limited access to the internet and offering them a whole range of services that today they don't have. So we're talking about, I mean, obviously people will be familiar with the term digital divide, but we're not just talking about digital divide between developed and developing or emerged and emerging markets, but also within those nations, I assume, say South Africa would possibly be a prime example, or lots of Nigeria would probably yeah. be a prime example as well. Is that, is, that what, is that what we're looking at? Is And how divisive is the digital divide? I mean, is, is it, a, it, it could become potentially a really big social issue, couldn't it? Yes, I mean, it, it depends how each country takes it. You know, as mm. I said, they all have this date of switching off um, their, their, their analog service. Mm. Um, no government will dare do that until 99% of the population has analog TV. So how are they ever going to make that happen um, with these countries with vast populations and how are they going to recover the costs mm. from it? So you have private companies investing and taking the risk, mm. not going to be very popular. 
or you have foreign governments supporting them, again, not very mm. popular. Uh, what we are trying to do is enable them to have control. So we try and get them to create through DMS, a whole series of local services created by local people, local mm. advertisers, so it all stays within the country. So, you know, the country generates its own wealth. It's not relying on external companies. Mm. We're, we're not there to tell them how to run the business. We're here to guide them on the different business models and, which, and they will find out which is best one for their market sure. Sure. and providing them with the technology and the support. But ultimately, it's their product, their services for their customers. They're not selling themselves a glide mm. to a foreign multinational or, or a foreign power. You mentioned India, and in fact I probably did as well in a previous question there, but reading some statistics about the Indian cable market, I was thinking actually in the IBC Daily here, it's quite, I mean, broadband is considered to start at 256 kilobits a second, which we, we, we would, no. Um, <laughs> and the, the sheer number of cable operators out there, like, is a big market opportunity for DMS in India? You it's mentioned huge, you have some yeah, customers Yes, yeah. uh, it's a huge opportunity. Mm. Um, as I said earlier, the challenge is getting them to think differently. They're not, they no longer are a broadcaster. It's a bit like yeah. an airline just takes passengers, but actually they can use their plane to the carry cargo. cargo. Yeah. So the same, they've got a pipe, now digital. It can carry a lot more channels, mm. which is always popular, but also it can carry services that make them money out of okay. you know, very low maintenance cost. Mm. That, that's what DMS is about. And more specifically on the set-top box side of things, and again, I understand you may not want to reveal the cost of those set-top boxes, but how, what techniques are you using to keep the cost low of those boxes, yet whilst providing a level of interactivity and a nice clean UI and all of that? Um, well, we've got existing technology that has been out there before, and really we've just tried to get the most out of it. I mean, what's also changed a lot is the processing power of chips, you know, the way they can process data. So the, the price of chips has come down a lot. We work very closely with the main chip providers of set-top boxes. And we have a very good relationship with them. It's worked with um, Tricolor, it's working in India. So, you know, the, the whole CPU processing power, is, that's the key, that's mm -hmm. the cost. Um, the rest are, the, the bomb costs for, for the rest of the box aren't going to change much. So work very close with strategic partners, ensuring that they, we get the best price from them, allows us to then offer the set-top box manufacturer a combination of costs that are quite low. Okay. So, you know, and again, set-top box prices are coming down regularly as well. And do you have a, a, presumably you're working on a reference design model for this? Do you have a part of that, what, what stage you're um, at? So you can then use multiple manufacturers and... Well, we, we do have some reference designs, uh, but like with every customer, they always want slightly different things. Slightly different, things, sure. yeah. okay. Um, <coughs> it's not so much that we have a reference design, that's not our challenge. Our challenge is the software that sits on so it. Sits inside it, okay. So what the operator, what the set to box manufacturer does isn't really our concern as long as they deliver what okay. it, the functionality. Yeah, okay. We provide the software, they do the reference design. When you say you provide the software, is that including the, the integration of, of the interactive engine and so exactly. on and so, so forth? Exactly, so the, yeah. the DMS, um, so if we're looking at possibly like HPB TV or M -H or MHP, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are the sort of standards that... MHP, yeah, well, dear, dear deceased. <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so basically, obviously, there is a standard stack of middlewares that, that are, are there for us to use. So we work with them, but it's more the chip guys that have to do that. We really provide our own DMS, our own conditional access. Um, they then provide the reference design and produce the low cost set top box. So you, something I just talked about with our previous guests and, and is, is growing rapidly. You mentioned HBB TV there. You, you are also working with an HBB TV box in, is that? Yes, is that? I mean, that, that's, um, at this IBC we launched uh, DMS on HBB TV. Mm -hmm. So again, we understand that HBB TV seems to be growing again. Uh, obviously there's that's a lot more, more standards and um, we're looking at that technology as well. So, you know, we're just expanding sort of the range of uh, platforms that we will run DMS on. Okay. okay. And I just, in your, the stand you're sharing here, when I came up earlier on to have a chat with you, that the health issue, you, you had a screen there about malaria in, yeah. in Africa, so how important is that information dissemination, because presumably they're reliant on newspapers at this juncture to do so, is, is that correct? Yeah, so right now, as I was saying, um, 
government departments will offer public service bulletins. Mm. So they will publish in most of the dailies articles about a uh, school opening or a vaccination program. So putting those pages on the television mm. guarantees more eyeballs than the newspapers. Uh, there's more circulation, there's more people watching television than reading newspapers. So again, you can really target those mm. customers and the, go the governments will reach more people that way. Yeah. And if they publicize that they are on the DMS pages, then people make the effort to look at that information. Sure. And again, you can more quickly update the information. You know, it's, it's digital broadcast, so changes can be done straight away uh, by each government department. There's no need for the operator necessarily to be involved. Okay, that's, that's a good good point there actually so in terms of use the editorial content if you yeah. like on, on uh, in the DMS given DMS rollout is it like using a sort of web CMS is that what we're talking about yeah, content the management day, system or? it is a CMS system it's a content yeah. management system um, is then published to a carousel a broadcast carousel which then mm. publishes it onto the transport stream so you know, the CMS can be used externally by journalists, by government departments, mm. and the operators can have the final say. You can set up permissions as to who's going to mm. have what approvals to, to publish on the um, on the television. You know what, what the viewers are going to see. And despite the uh, uh, sometimes impoverished uh, populations or partly populations in these countries. Presumably, big brands. I mean, Nigeria is a prime example. Big brands, are, you know, they, they love their champagne and, and all of that, or a certain level of society they do. So, DMS has a role in that as well. Do you, do you see that for, for, for advertising in that regard, or is it more likely to be local service advertising that you see? Um, I think the big brands wouldn't be interested. They're already targeting that sector of the market in a different way. So, I think it's the small local advertisers okay. uh, who will see an, a window to reach more people. Mm. So, it's, it's a slightly different. Uh, advertising world, but again, it will vary from country to country and operator to operator. Mm. So, okay. But the point is, it's flexible and, and easy to use. So you know, you don't need amazing uh, design agencies to to publish the the adverts. Sure. So you're saying somebody like me, I could use it, for example. Well, I don't know about that, cost. <laughs> um, <laughs> really, that really. <laughs> this doesn't involve crayons. No. <laughs> uh, really, my, my last question for uh, this afternoon. Presumably, you're, when you're using electronic equipment in some fairly harsh environments, Africa being again being times up monsoon area, presumably the lifetime life cycle of that technology might be somewhat shortened relative to being in a nice, comfortable, warm living room. Is that is that is that would that be fair to say? And how much, therefore, does that uh, impact on the cost point you're aiming for with those boxes? Well, the operator will always look for the cheapest box. There's not a lot you can say to them about. Uh, maintenance and it's not Xset's position or place to say you know what the box is good. That's for the set-top box manufacturer to offer the guarantees. Mm. We're there to provide the software and the technology. We okay. can only advise. Um, obviously, there are certain parameters and requirements, but in terms of what um, casing and what they're going to use for their box is between the operator and the set-top box manufacturer. We're sure. there to provide the content that will okay. run on it. This is genuinely my last question. Where can the people find you at IBC? Um, we're partnering this year on the M Star booth. Yeah. Hall for a uh, meeting room in Hall One as well. Okay. And that's that's where we are if they want to okay. see more about DMS and X Second Excellent. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks for joining us again this afternoon. We've run out of time now and we'll be back shortly. Cheers.